back once again. Otronicon, we're at the Orlando Science Center. I know, there it is right there. There's Otronicon. So let's hang out. Now that it's not the VIP event, we can see what it's all about. Jen's gonna get her picture taken with uh, with uh, Wonder Woman, I don't know, and Captain America. We're just gonna start going through and just showing you guys. Like, here's a couple of racing simulators. Pretty awesome. This guy's got an Oculus Rift on and his little, like, seafoods and everything. Jen's gonna get in and do this. It's a Martin biplane pusher. Let's see how you do. No. Push the button. Let's see. You have to lean side to side to turn. All right, push the button again. Let's see. Let's see how you do. Oh, you're doing good now. You're like, so the Martin biplane is one of the first planes ever made. That's why it's so difficult to fly. Let's see how you do. I think you might crash pretty soon. Oh, look, there's a river. Looking good. There you go. Yeah, now you're really flying. No. Uh oh, now you're not flying. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear, you're upside down. I don't think this is gonna end good. Oh wait, you might might be a perfect landing. Let's see it. Let's see it. Perfect landing. Upside down. This is actually UCF, our uh, one of our local colleges. Jen's gonna give it a try. So wait, and this is what you see? Did you? You're gonna run into that tree. Oh, you crashed it. How did you crash into a tree? Okay, so now Tim wants to try this Oculus Rift game. Your hair. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. What do you think? Stall. Is it like fly flying a real plane? It is like flying a real plane. Nice. Do either of you have any experience with simulators or planes? He right. does. Yes. Are you on a pilot? No. Uh, <laughs> simulators? Yeah, well, I, I have flown a plane before. Okay. But, um, yeah, not, <laughs> not like on a regular basis. Casual pilot? Yeah. This is pretty awesome. You look pretty awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. There's all these people playing video games. This is all EA stuff, so it's all the different video games that uh, EA makes. And then in the background, there's chiptunes playing. Kyle's gonna do the, the Daytona racing. I wonder how it'll do. Kyle just ran into the wall. Oh no. Let's see if he hits the wall again on this turn. Let's see it. Always coming in hot. Always coming in hot. Ooh. This is Daytona too, so this is, here comes the big turn. Goodness. God, good, good. Oh, that was a close one. Woo. So there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a laser tag, like laser battle. All this Lockheed Martin stuff. Enable, which is a company that makes 3D printed prosthetic hands and stuff. Which is pretty awesome. Basically, you bend your wrist and that makes the fingers grab. So then you get a functional hand. And it's 3D printed, so you can do it yourself. Or a volunteer will do it for free for you. Uh, because the cost of the materials is tens of dollars. So these are all hands. We also have groups working on more like martial arts kind of things. Feet, all sorts of stuff. That's awesome. This is printing this piece. So in about an hour, we'll have a crazy fluorescent green ball. <laughs> oh yeah, look, you can start to see it's starting to show up right there. That's awesome. Hey, everybody. I'm sure you guys remember these robots doing Thriller before. But they do so much more, too. Mostly uh, education. You know, we, we teach people how to program. We get people engaged and they learn how to program not just the robots, but program in general using our platform. So, you know, kids are obviously pretty excited about it. And we show them how to do stuff like this and, and show them, hey, we can teach you how to program the robot to do that, too. Okay, you got one point. Oh, no. 
you get five points, you get one full mount. Okay? Watch, watch him get up. Yeah, well, he doesn't quite need yeah. us, and he fell, so he's going to try to get up by himself. It's a really open ended system. Or the more you know about the more you yeah. That was awesome. Dave's cool again. There's people all over the place doing all sorts of fun stuff. We're gonna try to go back to the very back and do It's a Trap, which is kind of like an escape type thing where you have to like try to solve puzzles to get out or stop like a missile or something. We'll find out. So this is the Melrose Center, which is at the actual the, the public library and down here. And it's just like this huge technology center, and it looks like they're taking her head and maybe putting it on a Minecraft character, which is pretty fun. So here they've got the 3D printer going, and some of you guys told us, like, Festival of Fantasy, Festival of Fantasy, right? Little Mermaid, Float, and Maleficent Float. You ready? Yeah. Oh, wait, I gotta get harder. Uh, Come on. You're too low. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Up higher. Up higher. Up higher. Over to the right. You're not gonna get it. That one's like heavier. You gotta be ah, over. Ah. I did it. <laughs> Here. Get the big one. Get the big one. Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> this is from Festival of Fantasy. Look at you. Yeah. Now you gotta fight a giant fire-breathing dragon. I know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you're just turning these knobs, right? And it's controlling, like, the thumb. I'm turning and controlling the thumb right now. That's pretty neat. And what does this one do? Oh, look at him. That's really cool. I know what you were thinking. All of those fingers better not go down. <laughs> This is a family show. I think that's probably why this one is taped off. Oh. Kyle informed us that this seashell hat from Festival of Fantasy was not 3D printed. The mold to mold it was. So Melrose Center that's at the library is actually kind of interesting because they have all these things available for public use, like a 3D printer, a green screen, computers, DSLRs, all kinds of other stuff for you to just go in and use. Well, this thing's new. It wasn't here last time. It looks like it's a giant paper airplane that you have little launchers that'll launch the paper airplane. Let's see if they can do it here. Let's see it. Yeah, look at that. All right, build the paper airplane. Let's give it a try here. All right, let's see here. Oh, come on. Let's see how Kyle does. Oh, failure to launch. <laughs> okay, here goes try number two. Oh! Go down a little bit. Try number three, I think, actually. Here, let's give it a try here. Ah, all right. This is where we're looking at. Are imported from Japan. Now, do you Japanese remember the video old game. Nintendo NES game system? Yes. The year 4 came out, that is a fully working Famicom game system. 30 year old video game system still works better than my Xbox. That's awesome. But we have a series of games all the way down here, including the Sailor Moon video games so that never came up in the US. So that's happy awesome. Happy to have some fun. Here's the Famicom. Look at that. This is like Super Mario Brothers, but only released in Japan. It's just a party. Is it? Yeah. I'm not even like, I'm doing this one handed. Oh, I died. Okay, you want to see spooky Japanese things. I don't know why they did this, but in the Japanese version of it, there's a microphone. So if I do this. Hello, hello, you can hear me in the TV. <laughs> That's so weird. Through the controller on a Japanese Nintendo. That's awesome. That is bizarre. In Japan, they have actual discs. Here's what they look like. That allow you to actually save your game. So this is a copy of F1 Racing. And it's just like an old standard computer disc, you can see it in there. But you would flip it over and you could save your game and pick up your game later when you were playing it as opposed to, oh, I'm gonna play it all the way through. That's, you, you could save Mario Brothers like this? Uh, not this one, but Mario Brothers 2, which in Japan is called Doki Doki Pan, you can do that one. That is awesome. Yep. And then that's Card Capture Story of Tetris, which is a popular anime in Japan. That's yeah, pretty sweet. Panel Hearts 3, which never came out in America, it's a fighting game for Xbox 360. And then that's the Super Famicom, which is the Super Nintendo, but it's playing a Sailor Moon video game that's a lot like Double Dragon. 
That's awesome. And then the last one, everybody loves Super Smash Brothers. So that is the Japanese original of Super Smash Brothers. So wait, so all this is just some of the games that are going to be at the Florida Anime Experience yep. in April? this is our fifth year. Um, each year we theme the convention based on a specific anime. Uh, year one we did Cowboy Bebop, year two Sailor Moon, this is year five. We're doing a very popular anime called Neon Genesis Evangelion. And we booked the voice actors from four primary pilots, Rei, Shinji, Asuka, and Mari, from the new movies that are out in Japan. So, we're theming everything around that right now. Storing a game like this, this is Super Breakout, this is four kilobytes of data. Four K, all right? Now, flash forward to today's day and age, if you buy the top end Xbox One, it comes with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Just to put that in perspective, today's top end video game system has as much space to store 125 million copies of this game. Wow. Now, this is Super Breakout. This is the sequel to the Atari classic Breakout. Who wrote the original game Breakout? I know the answer. That's Do you know, know the answer? answer? No, I don't. So called you over here. Yeah. Who is it? Who is it? It was Jobs and Wozniak. Jobs and Wozniak, before they started working for uh, Apple and creating it. Fun fact that people don't know, Atari is an American company, even though it's a Japanese name. So the very first console gaming, like, launch came from America. Then Nintendo hijacked it in the 80s. And it's been... Founded, founded by... Hmm? Atari founded by... Oh, Atari was, Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. No, the pusher. Yes. Who also founded... Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> We're going in to see Arc Attack again. Let's see. They're going to do the full show before it wasn't the full show.
uh, it gets way harder when you have to play the guitar with a chainmail glove on one hand, a bicycle helmet on your head, and then getting zapped in said head by 500,000 volts of electricity. Well, essentially, we're this crazy mad scientist slash rock group, and we tour around the country with these machines behind us uh, called Tesla coils. And we've engineered them in such a way that we can get them to play music for us. So all the tones that you're hearing in the last two songs were actually coming from the sparks themselves. This is going to be pretty loud, so I'm going to count down from three to one. Uh, you might want to cover your ears. All right, three, two, one. This black box here contains a capacitor. And capacitors are a lot like a battery in the fact that they can store electrical charge. But unlike a battery, we can discharge all of the energy stored in an instant. So what you just saw there was a piece of aluminum foil taking 10,000 amps of electricity, and it vaporized instantly. I hope all of you have played with magnets at some point in time of your life, because they're magnets. very fun. How yeah. do they work? And magnets stick to some things like steel and refrigerators, uh, but it doesn't stick to everything, like aluminum. Aluminum is not magnetic, but I want to turn this piece of aluminum into a magnet. So how I'm going to accomplish that is I'm actually going to run electricity through it. Anytime you run electricity through a piece of wire, it actually generates a magnetic field around it. What I have here is I have my capacitor and a switch and then a coil of wire. So I'm going to charge it up and push this switch and it's going to discharge it into this coil of wire generating a large magnetic field. Then I'm going to set this aluminum ring on top of it and it's also going to become a magnet and that's because of a property called induction. It's actually going to induce electrical current to go around circularly in this ring, and it's going to become a magnet itself, and they're going to repel. Three, two, one. Right, and that also concludes my talk about magnets and electricity, and John is going to introduce you to the last member of our group. Fourth and last member of Architect is our drummer. You may have seen him back there in the dark. He's coming out right now. His name is King Beat. King is a royalty, Beat is a Beat the Drum. But not only is a, he a really gifted drummer, but he's also a kind of maybe average rapper too. So he's gonna do a song for you. Robot is mechanical, different from an animal. We can be so technical, and we've got a manual. Just make sure to recharge my battery. Just make sure to recharge my battery. You may be seeing Sam behind me wheeling out a human-sized metal cage. What we'd like to do with this metal cage is grab an audience participant, take them up here, stick them inside here, move it in between the giant lightning machines, and then make them dance for our music. Who would like to do it?
You can find us on Facebook or YouTube or just go to architect.com. They're bringing out King Beat over here to uh, do a photo op with them, like take a picture with these girls. Look at him. Look at that. Here he is. <laughs> that is awesome. You know what's crazy? He has a mustache too. I know. He's a little tiny mustache. He's got a lot of like 3D printed parts too, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Just mainly in his head. Oh, okay. That was so great. This is awesome. The best thing about this is this is a Da Vinci robot. They actually use this to do surgery. Not this actual model, but this is like a training model. And what are they doing with it? Playing Operation. We came into the 21 and up section now because it's after six, because they got like beers and stuff in here. And they've got all these old vintage video games like Asteroids and Mortal Kombat. These are all from BART. I think you guys have seen when we went to BART before. Space Invaders. Yeah, look. He's DJing right now. That's pretty awesome. She can see it, she can go down to the second floor. And then the guys from BART are here, like, serving up beer. So we were talking to some of the guys from BART, which is the place that's putting on all this stuff, and they said that this Goonies pinball machine is one of a kind. Like, a buddy of his made it. That is awesome. See, remember when I was playing? I don't know if it was on my video or Kyle's video, but we were, I was playing that Sailor Moon thing, and I said, this reminds me of Turtles in Time. Holler at me for burger time, yo. How do I play? Yeah. yeah. You push the, the start button. Is there a start button down at the bottom down here? That one? Point. There we go. What do I do? Keep walking on them until they fall. Oh! But don't get hit by that pickle or whatever. Go up the ladder. No! Uh, oh, I didn't see the, the resolution the game. The graphics are so bad I don't know what I'm doing. Oh no, look, everybody's clapping. Yeah, they're dancing out there to like this sweet chiptune song. You guys recognize this song? This is Robot Rock by, uh, what's their name? Gosh dang it, Daft Punk. They have like a whole sushi line going on here. This is awesome. There's the final outcome of the sushi, and apparently this place is delicious, so we're gonna have to try it. I'd say it's pretty spot on. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but Kyle's day job, he's actually one of the magic dancers. So, I think it's very obvious from this. Your secret's out, Kyle. Oh, hey dog in the building. Jen is excited about this water fountain and she wanted me to film it because of how like perfect the stream well, is. When we you go guys ready? Whoa. Oh, hey, hey. You guys are on the other side of the water fountain. You gotta turn it off now. Okay. <laughs> the only reason I wanted you to film it is because of all of the water the water fountains at the theme parks are terrible. And this one is great. So thanks to Orlando Science Center. My favorite part was water farting. <laughs> Dude, these cartoon people dance way better than I ever would. Look at this, we're gonna do it to trap right now. We did it, save the world. All right, so this was like a, you go in the room and you get locked in the room and then you have to find clues and figure out little like hints and stuff like that to try to figure out how to get in this case in order to stop a bomb from going off. Because Jen pushed the button and set off the rocket. Oh, sorry. He told me to push the button. <laughs> no, he didn't tell you to. Starlight, the little girl that was causing mischief told oh, you to. Oh, yeah, she did. That's true. And so we ended up doing like solving all kinds of puzzles and doing it. She we won. This is Jen and Jesse playing Just Dance, the J&J &J crew. While I was standing off in the background, it like the Xbox One's like, oh, you want to play? And it like zoomed in on my face. And I'm like, what the heck? I'm like way back here. I was back there where Kyle is. Like, look at how far away he is from people that are playing. You're actually kind of a good dancer, Jen. You're pretty much just skanking right now. My favorite thing is this is like 8 bit, and then it looks like he's playing like a Game Boy. Good girl. Did you just kick her? No, I almost fell. Oh. Yeah, that's only a Game Boy. I'm gonna run.
up to the third floor because I want to see how he's making that music. So that's the end of our night here at the Orlando Science Center. It was awesome. Definitely worth coming. Hey, what's worms? Oh, I don't know. Like yeah. moss? Okay. There's turtles and alligators in there as well. Do you see them? Them's alligators right there. What? Alligators. We're on our way out. And since we're right next to it, we decided to come to Shake Shack. They have a tap for their water. Let me get that for you. It's pretty fancy. Can you like slide it to me across the bar? Yeah. <laughs> No. That was like cocktail. Oh, it's so great. Yeah. So wait, does this, does this look like it compares to tea? I would rather eat a burger yeah, fry. Not at all. No. Burger fry. Like, I don't know. Here's why I'm a little bit disappointed, right? What I'm used to cowfish. This burger, look at how big my hand is. I've taken two bites of this and it's halfway gone, by the way. And then, like, look at Kyle's though. Kyle's looks gigantic. I have two patties. Two patties. So you have to order two patties. Oops. But see, I I do like a thin patty. I, I like that style of patty, but I just was expecting something bigger because that's what everybody said. I know. I but it's good. It is. Like, it's not bad. It is good. But I don't know. I'm used to a larger piece of meat. <laughs> yeah, you got both. Jesse got the burger and the mushroom. I'm gonna use this nice fountain as my backdrop. But I think I figured out where like food snobs come from. It's like situations like this where we're like going to all these places and then we end up at Shake Shack, which is, it was delicious. It was very good, but I'm like, I don't know, I probably would never eat here again because it's not the same as other places that I've been. And I could totally go to those places like, no problem, like I know where they're at. We could go there, it wouldn't have cost us any more. Like, no skin off my back to go somewhere that's better than this. You know what I mean? Woo! What an exhausting day, but we had a blast at Otronicon. If you guys wanted more information on it, otronicon.org. It costs like 19 bucks to go. Totally worth it. I'm gonna go to bed now, so I will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.